So this is Leslie Batchelder, and she is the cluster coordinator for popular culture. Um, and she is also a scholar of popular culture. And uh, I wanted to ask Leslie, what do you think what do you think students who take popular culture courses should know or be able to do when they come out of their courses? Uh, well, it's a great question. Um, I think that uh, the study of popular culture should enable a student to be a much more um, um, savvy consumer of media, of mass media in particular, you know, like films and comic books and, you know, the whole array um, blogs, you know, social media stars that we have now, you know, YouTube stars and things like that. I mean, or Vines or whatever. To be much more critically aware, um, and by critically, of course, we don't mean negative. We mean, you know, have a depth of analysis of these products instead of just being sort of bombarded by them, you know, to kind of say, well, wait a minute, what does this really mean? And what kind of representations are happening in pop culture and what does that mean and you know we have it's fantastic in an election year we have this great uh, free-for-all going on in public discourse around the presidential campaign and that's a great example of how certain issues come up like sexism or you know privilege and um, people of color you know interrupting different candidates from Bernie Sanders to Donald Trump and saying, hey, Black Lives Matter. You know, it's like, well, why is that happening? And and how is that dealt with in our media? And how do people think about that? And how do the images that we're fed um, create an atmosphere in which that's possible, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, so that it's possible to think about women in a certain way as, you know, um, not really good candidates because they're too cranky or, you know, the other words that people use mm -hmm. um, or whatever, you know, it's like to, to get young people to really look at the media and say, wait a minute, mm -hmm. you know, what kind of images am I being fed and why and who owns the rights to production of those images and, and why aren't other images or other ideas being floated around? Mm -hmm. Why is it so outrageous you know, what some people might say, you know, that Bernie Sanders can campaign, for example, you know, oh, this is outrageous. But if you actually look at our founding documents and stuff, it's not really that outrageous. And part of that is the media influence around different campaigns or the fact that someone like Donald Trump can just go hog wild and make all sorts of comments. And in the past, that hasn't been acceptable in our political discourse, and suddenly it is. So what is that about? You know, so for people to really be, students to really be able to think about what kind of cultural issues we have. Certainly, I mentioned Black Lives Matter, you know, the whole issue of race in this country. We've gone through the Civil Rights Movement, we had the Civil War, then we had the Civil Rights Movement, and we think that we've dealt with it. But uh, actually, we're still dealing with it every day, and we're still dealing with the repercussions of it. And speaking of um, speaking of race and racial politics in the media, we had this huge um, sort of crisis moment in the Academy Awards mm -hmm. because people were saying, "Wait a minute! There's a few good black actors out there and directors and so on and so forth, and they never get recognized. And why is that?" So. You know, these kind of things weave in and out of the images that we see every day and the mm -hmm. way that we understand popular culture. And so I want students to walk away saying, um, being more critical, sort of um, having agency mm. over and against these images instead of just being a passive consumer and saying, oh, this is cute, this is funny. Like a good example of that is athletic gear. Like a lot of people say, oh, I love Nike products. But to think about the marketing that goes behind it and mm -hmm. to think about the choices. And sure, they're great products, but are they really worth such and such money? And what you know, how are they made? How are they produced? And why do we have this fashion fetish around, you know, these shoes, these mm -hmm. products, you know, to, to be able to say, well, maybe I really don't need to consume all that mm -hmm. stuff. And, you know, and I think that most people do have some cynicism or some sort of critical thinking about media, but I think that as an educated person, you have to have that even more so. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to be aware of um, things that support dominant ideologies about who 
um, should be a leader or who should be in control or who has something valid to say even. Mm -hmm. And that plays out in the media, you know, in the so mass So what media. I hear you saying is that um, people who study pop culture, we're looking at it both um, culture yeah, as um, um, artifacts of the culture, but we'll also look maybe at it historically, yeah. that it's about asking questions. Mm -hmm. It's about looking at... Um, dynamics of power and influence right it's about looking at um, consumption consumption and yeah. the market and how the market influences um, media and also how media and and um, things like film news social media how they influence both the way we see ourselves and the way we see each other yeah and not only that but what you just mentioned that list you know, film, media, news, there's a synergy that's never been there before. Like you can turn on the CBS news. When I was growing up, the news was the news. Now mm -hmm. they're marketing products yeah. of their sister companies, like a film, mm -hmm. Pearl Harbor. You saw it with Star Wars. You see yeah. it in the news itself, right. the nightly news, these big, the three big national news sources that we have, have had traditionally ABC, CBS, CBS and NBC. Mm -hmm. They're actually marketing films now. So a film is no longer just an object to be understood as, oh, this is a film, let's study film now. But mm -hmm. it's also this whole franchise of events around marketing the film right. that influence us. Because mm -hmm. we see it, we go on Facebook, We everywhere we go, we right. see advertisements McDonald's. for McDonald's. And Star <laughs> yeah. Wars, the recent Star Wars release was a great example of that. I mean, it was a media blitz. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't get away from it. Yeah. Even if you don't like Star Wars. I don't happen to love Star Wars. Uh, okay. But I know. You should not say that. I don't happen to love it. But, you know, I was inundated. And I, and I found it annoying. But I also found it interesting, all the connections, the synergy between the marketing component mm -hmm. of it. You know, and we're seeing that more and more and more. That's accelerating, not yeah. decreasing. Yeah. So those things aren't separate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anymore. So let me ask you the next question, which is, what do you see in terms of the relationship between the things you might learn in a pop culture course and social service and social change? Well, one of the um, one of the assignments that I used to do in my pop culture course all the time was I it was a group project and I would ask students I would give them a list of alternative media sources like we have quite a few here in Portland you know KBU mm -hmm. whatever a bunch of different alternative media sources and I would say you know I want you to investigate how they're doing something a little different than mass media mm -hmm. and so I guess I sort of see in terms of service work or thinking about how messages get out I would see a student going out and visiting either an alternative media source, and there are many in Portland, mm -hmm. or um, doing something like going somewhere where media is produced, like uh, uh, the we have a really great zine place here mm -hmm. in Portland where they have a whole center mm -hmm. where you can go learn about making zines, you can make your own zine, and... You know, it's it's kind of like a, a working space for creating it, scenes. Are you talking about the independent? Yeah, independent media publishing publishing research, research center. center. Yeah, IPRC. Uh -huh. Yeah, and and that I think would be a really interesting thing for a student to go out and mm -hmm. work there, or or um, you know, do something there. I mean, I think that it's really important for students to think about how media is produced here or they could go to somewhere like um you know one of the small film places or mm -hmm. you know and, and see what kind of work goes on there so i would like them to investigate further what actually goes on in producing popular mm -hmm. culture sources here in portland so yeah. that would be for me yeah i could see too um uh, a student thinking about how popular culture media influences the way we think about certain groups of people and how mm -hmm. that could influence mm -hmm. um, social change. I mean, you mentioned a lot of examples when you were talking earlier about yeah. Black Lives Matter and, yeah. and how um, just how um, the media is dealing with the Academy Awards and how we can use popular culture actually to think critically about 
um, social change. Right, right. And it definitely influences social right, change. Right, right. And yeah. I think that um, it's interesting to see how the mainstream media deals with people who are trying to say, well, wait a minute, this narrative is... Mm-hmm. Who's written this narrative? Mm-hmm. Usually it's these big corporations, you know, with right. massive marketing you know, tools behind mm-hmm. them. And I think that it's it's interesting, yeah, to go work with um, social justice groups or groups that are involved with non-represented communities mm-hmm. and say, well, how are you um, trying to get your message out there? Mm-hmm. I guess that's kind of what I mean by alternative media, yeah, too. Yeah. One of the things I like about places like KBU, I'll just say again, the mm-hmm. alternative radio station, is they're trying to get alternative messages out mm-hmm. there about events. So, like, they might cover Black Lives Matter completely differently than the mainstream Mm -hmm. press, right? Because they might actually have black people, for one thing, in there talking (laughs) about, you know, in our community, it goes down like this. Portland, did you know that Portland, you know, the police bureau was uh, taken into, uh, not custody, but, you know, it was taken over, looked at very seriously Mm -hmm. by the federal government, because of abuses against people of color and people with mental illness. And they found that that was true. Yeah. So they did a whole investigation. And so, you know, they'll, they'll talk about those things and say, you know, this is reality. And people try to say, oh, these black people, you know, they're just, you know, all lives matter or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and they don't really understand the history, going all the way back to slavery, but, you know, the history of these people, right. and particularly in Portland. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a very specific narrative about being black in Portland. Right. So I think that, yeah, I, I think there's a connection between social justice issues and alternative media mm-hmm. and things like that. So I would see students working in, in that way. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm going to 